Hello, Christ is risen. Indeed he is risen. I'm Father Kevin Long of St. Elias, St. Joachim Orthodox Church in Newcastle, Pennsylvania. Today is Friday, May 24th, 2024, and here are the readings for today. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8, verse 40, and chapter 9, verses 1 through 19. In those days, Philip was found at Azatos, and passing on, he preached the gospel to all the towns till he came to Caesarea. But Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues at Damascus, so that if he found any belonging to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now as he journeyed, he approached Damascus, and suddenly a light from heaven flashed about him, and he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he said, Who are you, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. But rise and enter the city, and you will be told what you are to do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, hearing the voice but seeing no one. Saul arose from the ground, and when his eyes were opened, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him into Damascus. And for three days he was without sight, and neither ate nor drank. Now there was a disciple at Damascus named Ananias. The Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Here I am, Lord. And the Lord said to him, Rise and go to the street called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas for a man of Tarsus named Saul. For behold, he is praying, and he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him so that he might regain his sight. But Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard from many about this man, how much evil he has done to thy saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority for the chief priests to bind all who call upon thy name. But the Lord said to him, Go, for he is a chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before the Gentiles and kings and the sons of Israel. For I will show him how much he must suffer for the sake of my name. So Ananias departed and entered the house. And laying his hands on him, he said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road by which you came, has sent me that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. And immediately something like scales fell from his eyes and he regained his sight. Then he rose and was baptized and took food and was strengthened. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John chapter 6 verses 48 through 54. Let us be attentive. The Lord said to the Jews who believed in him, I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread which comes down from heaven, that a man may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Glory to thee, our God, glory to thee. One of the things that Christians were accused of at the very beginnings of their time, in addition to treason, was cannibalism. Yep, cannibalism. Why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because of passages like the Gospel reading we heard today. Let me read to you from the second part of this reading. Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up on the last day. Now, 
obviously to us Christians. He is referring to the Holy Eucharist. He is referring to that sacrifice of praise that we give in every divine liturgy that we serve. The wine and the bread that have been consecrated through the prayers of the priest and through the will, the grace of the Holy Spirit. Those things have been transfigured. How? We do not know. God knows. But they have been transfigured into the very flesh, the very body, and the very blood of Christ. And so he is saying that anyone who does not partake of the Eucharistic feast will not be brought and has no life. Those have no life in them. Those who do partake of the Holy Eucharist have eternal life and will be raised by Christ on the last day. And so we hear again this image of the living bread, the bread of life. A man may eat of it and not die. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread which I give for the life of the world is my flesh. That's what our Lord says. And so here we understand that we as a people are a liturgical people, a Eucharistic people. The only sacrifice that is acceptable in the sight of God to this day now is the sacrifice of thanksgiving, the Eucharist. That is what we do. We gather and partake of his body and blood for our own nourishment, both of body and of soul. And then we take that nourishment, that energy that we have been given by Christ himself when we go into the world to proclaim his holy resurrection to those who need to hear it. We are not necessarily called to be vocal ambassadors of such things. I mean, God will give voice and utterance to whom he chooses. But as an evangelical community, which we are called to be, we are called to live into the reality of the resurrection of Christ. We are called to live into that reality by the way that we live, no longer looking to the world for our safety or our security or really anything, but rather taking the message of the resurrection and bringing it to the world and transfiguring the world just as the body and blood of Christ are transfigured through the wine and the bread, we then transfigure the world into a place that is really ready to receive the riven, risen Christ. That is our mission. When we are able to do that, then the evangelism will come, not through our mouths, not through the empty words from our lips, but rather through the fruits that we bear, because that's what we are called to do, to be ambassadors of Christ's life-giving death and resurrection. We do these things, we will be blessed by God and be given eternal life, because we will bear the fruits worthy of his high calling. May this be our lot, today and always. Amen. Christ is risen. Indeed he is risen. Hope you have a great day, and God willing, we'll see you tomorrow.